Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. David Malcolm Gray was born on the 20th of November 1956 in Dunedin, the second biggest city in the South Island of New Zealand. Dunedin currently has a population of 104,500 people. Gray was raised in Port Chalmers, 15 kilometres northeast of Dunedin. He was one of three children. His father, David Francis Gray, worked in a manufacturing company, while his mother, Mary Elizabeth Gray, was a machinist. He had two siblings, a sister John and a brother Barry. He attended Port Chalmers Primary School, where he was a loner. He then attended Otago Boys High School, one of the oldest boys secondary schools in New Zealand, which is located in Dunedin. Notable alumni include Sir John Marshall, who was the 28th Prime Minister of New Zealand from the 7th of February 1972 until the 8th of December 1972. Sir Francis Bell, who was the 20th Prime Minister of New Zealand from the 14th of May 1925 until the 30th of May 1925. Hamish Bond, who was a rower and won gold at the Coxless pair at the London 2012 Olympics and at the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympics, as well as Wyatt Crockett, who played as a prop for the Crusaders in the Super Rugby and represented the All Blacks, the national team of New Zealand, between 2009 and 2017, with Crockett playing 71 games. Gray attended Otago Boys High School from 1971 until 1973 when he dropped out. A former classmate stated that he was quiet and unassuming and that there was nothing frightening about him. But once again, throughout his time at school, he was seen as a loner. Today, it is believed that Gray had schizophrenia. His father, David Francis Gray, died in 1978 when Gray was 22 and his mother, Elizabeth Gray, died in 1985 when Gray was aged 29. The death of his mother deeply affected Gray causing him to move from Port Chalmers to the family's holiday home in Aramana, which was located on 27 Muri Street, Aramana. Aramana is a small coastal town 27 kilometers north of Dunedin. In Māori, it means pathway to the sea. The permanent population as of 2001 is just 261 individuals, which is supplemented by seasonal visitors who visit it for its natural scenery. Gray worked occasionally as a farmhand, but had been unemployed for a number of years prior to the Aramana shooting. He was a regular customer at Galaxy Books and Records in Lower Stewart Street in Dunedin, one of the city's main streets. He was a fan of military books and the Soldier of Fortune magazine, a periodical magazine of the United States of America which was published yearly from 1975 until April 2016. Soldier of Fortune magazine reported on wars including conventional warfare, low intensity warfare, counterinsurgency and counterterrorism. In January 1990, Gray threatened an assistant at Galaxy Books and Records with what appeared to be a shotgun in a cardboard box, with owner Bill Bronson serving him a trespass notice in February 1990. He was also an animal lover, which led to a conflict with his neighbour Gary Holden, whose animals kept dying and he had been arguing with Holden since 1988. Murray Street resident Laura Young, who lived next door to Gray, said that no one really liked him and no one had much to do with him, as he was a quiet man who kept to himself. Throughout mid to late 1990, Gray's physical and mental state worsened. He became alienated with few friends. On the morning of the 13th of November 1990, he travelled to a bank in Dunedin and angrily objected to a $2 bank fee for a cheque. He then went to Ello's gun shop on King Edward Street and placed a $100 deposit on a gun, which he intended to collect the next week. However, he would never return. Gray was a huge gun fanatic. He then went to the Continental Coffee Bar. Served a cold pie, he became confrontational and was asked to leave, threatening the owners, stating, I'll be back. I'm going to get you. I'll blow you away.
At 7pm, Gray confronted Holden about one of his dogs wandering onto the property. Gray then went into his house and retrieved a Norsino 84S semi-automatic rifle that he had purchased in Dunedin, walked outside and shot Holden multiple times in the chest. He then shot Holden fatally through the head. Holden's two daughters, 9-year-old Chiquita Holden and 11-year-old Jasmine Amber Holden, as well as his adopted daughter, 11-year-old Rera R. G. Bryson, who was the daughter of Holden's girlfriend, Julie Bryson, ran inside Holden's home after seeing Holden being shot, with Gray following them and shooting Chiquita in the chest and arm with a squirrels and Birmingham model 16.22 caliber semi-automatic rifle. The bullet lodged in her abdomen. Chiquita escaped by running out the back door to Julianne Bryson's home. Gray then shot the other children and set Holden's home on fire. Both Bryson and Chiquita drove away past Holden's house as it was burning with Gray shooting at the pair. Where Agiki Bryson and Jasmine Amber Holden would later die of their injuries. Gray then started shooting indiscriminately, including targeting the Percy family who were returning from a day trip of Foshang, who had seen Holden's home burning and stopped to help. Gray shot Vanessa Grace Percy, aged 26, in the back as she ran down the street in terror, with Percy dying a few hours later at the scene. Gracie then shot at her children, Dion Raymond Jack Percy, aged 26, and Leo Wilson, also aged 6, who were both killed. He then shot at four-year-old Stacy Percy, who was critically injured by a bullet to the abdomen but survived. Gray then shot 42-year-old Ross James Percy, leaving Stacy Percy an orphan. He then proceeded to kill Aleki Tully, who was aged 41. Entering the home of 69-year-old Magnus Jamison, who was known as Tim, he proceeded to kill Jamison as well as Victor James Crimp, who was known as Vic, who was visiting Jamison. Crimp was the former mayor of Green Island, a suburb of Dunedin, which is not an actual island. Gray proceeded to shoot James Alexander Dixon, known by the name of Jim, who was aged 45 and was looking after his dog. Dixon's mother, Eva Helen Dixon, and neighbour Simon Christopher Cole, known as Chris and aged 62, went onto the road to see what the noise was. Cole ran to a phone booth to call the police, with Gray shooting at them both, wounding Cole with Eva Helen Dixon diving for cover. Having had her hip replaced and unable to walk without assistance, Eva Helen Dixon pulled along on her stomach using her arms and feet in a Dutch to get inside her home and called the New Zealand Emergency Services. She then crawled back to tell Cole that help was coming. This was the first call made to emergency services with a dispatcher advising her to stay inside. Dixon was later awarded the George Medal, a decoration of the United Kingdom and Commonwealth awarded for gallantry not in the face of the enemy, in which case the George Cross is awarded. Cole later died in hospital at 2am on the 14th of November. The first police officer to arrive on the scene was Sergeant Stewart Guffrey, who was in charge of a Port Chalmers port station and an NCO in the Armed Offenders Squad. The 41-year-old father of three was a native of Dunedin. Guffrey attended Otago Boys High School but was not in the same year as Gray. Armed with merely a Smith & Wesson Model 10 police revolver, as in 1990 frontline police officers did not routinely carry firearms, Guffrey enlisted the help of Constable Russell Anderson who had arrived a short time earlier with the fire services. Anderson was armed with a rifle belonging to a resident. With darkness approaching, the pair moved through Aramana until they reached Gray's house, with Sergeant Guffrey deploying Constable Anderson to cover the front while he moved to cover the rear of the house. Detective Paul Allen Knox and two constables arrived and commenced the first step of a cordon contain appeal, standard police strategy for armed offenders. Sergeant Guffrey observed Gray and relayed his movements to the police communications centre. Constable Anderson spotted Gray coming out of the front of the house and issued a challenge at which Gray retreated. Sergeant Guffrey took cover in the sand dunes of a neighbouring crib, which is a New Zealand word for a holiday home. Gray was encountered by Sergeant Guffrey who yelled at him to surrender. Gray shouted, don't shoot. 
This led Sergeant Guffrey to believe that Gray was surrendering. Gray then fired multiple times on Sergeant Guffrey, with one shot striking him in the head, killing him. Sergeant Guffrey was awarded the George Cross Medal, the second highest award of the United Kingdom Honours System, which is also used for the Commonwealth and is awarded for acts of the greatest heroism. Police searched for Gray at 9.40pm but were unable to find him. Nearby homes were evacuated. The Dunedin branch of the anti-terrorist squad, now known as the Special Tactics Group, arrived in Sildorf Aramana with a 250 metre roadblock, securing it with an armoured car. With only one road into Aramana, firefighters and other police officers as well as members of the media were prevented from entering. Anti-terrorist squad units in Christchurch, the second biggest city of New Zealand and the biggest city of the South Island of New Zealand, in Vicargo, the third biggest city in the South Island of New Zealand and Timarua, the fifth biggest city of the South Island of New Zealand, joined their counterparts in Aramanach. Additional group members of the anti terrorist group based in Auckland and Christchurch, following authorisation by the Commissioner of Police John Jameson from Wellington, the capital of New Zealand, travelled to Dunedin but were unable to get transport with the Royal New Zealand Air Force. As a result, they were forced to get a commercial flight the next morning on the 14th of November 1990. The crew of the Air Force Iroquinos carried out low, slow passes over areas of bush throughout the night where Gray was believed to be hiding, carrying armed police and dropping tear gas grenades in an attempt to force him to come out, but this did not come to fruition. At 6am on the 14th of November, members of the anti-terrorist group from Christchurch moved into Aramana and went into Gray's house on 27 Mugi Street, passing bodies on the street. Clearing neighbourhood houses, they put a stun grenade into Gray's house, blowing out the windows, proceeding to input tear gas. Kicking down the door, they found that the house was empty. They proceeded to walk down the road, checking each house, looking for Gray. They then found the house where Gray had been hiding, spotting him through a window at 1.30pm. They put a stun grenade through a window, but it bounced off a mattress that Gray had placed as a barricade and landed back near the police. Police also fired tear gas into the crib. Both sides exchanged gunfire for two minutes with the Royal New Zealand Air Force, Iroquitos, positioning over the home so that Grey could not escape into bushes with life beginning to fade. At around 5.50pm, realising that he was running out of time, Grey ran out of the house shooting from the hip and shouting, Kill me! Fucking kill me, you bastards! Taking several steps forward, he was hit by anti-terrorist squad gunfire, hit in the eye, neck, chest and twice in the groin. Police had fired between 50 and 60 shots in the exchange. Despite his wounds, Gray continued to fight police when they approached him, breaking free of plastic handcuffs before being re-handcuffed. He berated police for not having killed him. Paramedics treated Gray and proceeded to take him to a Dunedin hospital, providing him with oxygen. But at 6.10pm, once outside of Aramana, Gray was pronounced dead. Including Gray, a total of 14 people had been killed, with two people wounded. Nearly half of the population of Aramana had been killed and the massacre sent shockwaves across New Zealand. Gray had utilised a plethora of weapons in the massacre, including an air rifle, arson fire, a .223 calibre, Norinco Type 84S sporting rifle, a 7.62 39mm Norinco SKS semi-automatic rifle, a .22 calibre Squires and Bingham Model 16 semi-automatic sporting rifle, a .22 calibre Winchester Model 750 rifle with suppressor, as well as a .22 calibre Remington Nylon 66 semi-automatic rifle. On the 17th of November 1990, Gray's house was burnt to the ground, with the Port Chalmers Fire Brigade dousing the surrounding vegetation to prevent the fire spreading. The massacre was one of a number of factors that led to the amendment of New Zealand's firearm legislation in 1992, under the then Minister for Police John Banks, who passed laws requiring written permits to order guns or ammunition by mail order, restricted ammunition sales to firearms license holders, added photographs to firearm licenses, 
required license holders to have secure storage for firearms at their home and, controversially, required all license holders to be re-vetted for new licenses, which would be valid for only 10 years. In 2019, after the Christchurch mosque shootings, John Banks said that he was haunted by not being able to persuade his colleagues to ban all semi-automatic guns after the Aramana massacre. The Christchurch mosque massacre targeted Muslim worshippers and was a terrorist attack committed by Brenton Harrison Tarrant, motivated by far-right extremism, Islamophobia and white supremacy. It took place at the Al Noor Mosque and Linwood Islamic Centre in Christchurch with 51 people killed in what is New Zealand's worst mass shooting. A memorial to the victims of the Aramana massacre was erected in Aramana. Additionally, a memorial was erected to Sergeant Stuart Guffrey at Dunedin Police Station. In 2018, survivors Chiquita Holden, then aged 37, and Detective Sergeant Vaughan, then aged 55, married in a low-key wedding ceremony, having met in a Dunedin hospital while recovering from their injuries. The books Tragedy at Aramana by journalist Paul Bensimon and Aramana, 20 Hours of Terror by police officer Bill O'Brien were published. The movie Out of the Blue, starring New Zealand actors Carl Urban and Matthew Sunderland, was released in 2006. Despite positive reviews, it faced a lot of opposition in Aramana. While it did make it into the top 10 highest grossing local movies in New Zealand, it was a box office bomb, grossing just $728 in the United States of America and $1,135,700 in New Zealand on a budget of 6 million New Zealand dollars. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, and have an amazing day.